everyone, my name's Andrew, and this is Canadian Starships. Welcome back to another update on the Enterprise E project. In between updates, I got all of the lighting installed into the saucer section. So the two halves, the lower hull and the upper hull, and all that wiring has been managed and has been epoxied down to the two halves. So I'm going to show that to you. The shuttle bay doors are drying right now. I masked off the little square sections on that are a dark gray color. The rest of it gets the whole color. And that is drying right now because I'm quickly going to be moving into the assembly stage, which is really amazing to be getting to on the saucer section. And the first step on the assembly stage is to get the shuttle bay doors in where they go and get that all closed up. So that's drawing, that's gonna go on, and then the two halves are gonna go together. Then I've got some other wiring work and electronics work to do before I fully assemble the entire ship. So hopefully this is going to be all about the assembly in this update, and by the time we're done, we're gonna have a whole ship that's assembled and ready for, you know, all the extra putty stuff. Now I will have some putty work to do on the saucer section before that gets attached to the main ship because there's a big, huge seam on the bottom that goes all the way around that will need attention. That's gonna take a little bit of time. So we'll see just how far we get. You know, I always make these predictions about how far I'm gonna get in an update and it never really necessarily works out, but, I am in the process of having two weeks holidays right now. So today right now is Wednesday and uh, I'm in the halfway through my first week off, which means I've got time to work on the project, but also I've got to get the outside of our house ready for winter and the inside of our house ready for our son who's being born at the end of the year. We've got to get his room ready, which has been a spare bedroom and a storage room. So got to find lots of place to store new things and get the room painted ready to go. So I'm working on a whole bunch of things during my time off. Uh, we haven't had any time off since February because of the whole coronavirus thing. Uh, it's made my job a whole lot busier. So I'm really happy to be off and not have to worry about work and just being able to do work on the project and get work done around the house. So first things first, I'm gonna show you what I've done with the uh, wire management uh, and securing all that down on the inside of the saucer section. Here's the work that's been done on the inside of the saucer section. So all of the lighting is installed, all of the LED strips, all of those micro SMDs, and all of the wiring has been well, let's just say it's been managed. And I'm just gonna give you a bit of a closer look here. This might look like a lot of spaghetti going all over the place, but here's the thing. Those micro SMDs are all pre-wired. And so it's really impossible to cut the wire and shorten. Um, even just trying to strip that wire being so frail and fragile, I tried it next to impossible. And uh, one of the issues I had on the saucer section, upper hull section, was that I had to avoid all of the windows. So it's a little bit here, there, and everywhere, but every single wire has been meticulously positioned to avoid every open window so that you don't get anything blocking those nice open windows. So yeah, everything's been reduced down to uh, some shared leads, and all of those leads are color-coded. Uh, white, brown, orange, and yellow, and those are coded for positive and negative and for flashing or non-flashing, so that when I route everything into the secondary hull to go down to the post, I know exactly what is supposed to be what. So all of these um, kind of main leads, well, not really main leads, but uh, main leads coming out of the saucer section are going to go down into the secondary hull, and they will be further reduced as they go down the post. I'll have to see how much I can fit through the post. Uh, but yeah, so this is the spaghetti I've been working on. It took a little while. Um, I've also put some white paint on the black uh, shrink wrap just to help out with the light reflection a little bit. I'll probably do the same thing on the upper hull section. So my next step is to install the shuttle bay doors in there. All the wiring is going to be running under the shuttle bay out the neck of the ship. 
Um, but the shuttle bay doors are just drying now. Today they will be installed. And once that's done, I will be able to get these two halves together. So the shuttle bay doors are installed and the two halves of the saucer section are put together. And uh, it's sealed up fairly well. There's just the one clamp left on. Uh, one small joint that hasn't quite cured up yet. And it's looking quite good. I did have to play around a little bit with the floor of the shuttle bay because it didn't uh, want to line up quite properly with all those wires underneath. So I did put a little bit of epoxy in there. There's still a wee little lip, but um, not overly noticeable. I'm quite happy with the way this whole thing has gone together and I will show you that seam on the bottom but it's looking pretty good I don't think it's going to take a huge amount of putty work to seal that up so I think that we are in really good shape I've gone ahead and masked off all of the areas that I don't want any paint getting on to so namely the impulse engines, the opening of the shuttle bay, the window for the observation deck of the shuttle bay. Also, I have masked off the nav lights in a bit of a creative way. So what you're seeing there is actually little dabs of hot melt glue on top of the SMDs to protect them from the paint. And the nice thing about the hot melt glue is that it doesn't aggressively adhere to the model. All I'll need to do is go through with my tweezers and pluck off the hot melt glue blob from on top of the SMD and it'll open that up nicely. So I've never tried that before, but I think it should work out nicely. So the top already has its main primer coat on, but the bottom is still in need of that prime coat. So my procedure is that I'm going to put that primer coat on, then I'm going to go around and work on that seam. And as I said earlier, considering how bad that seam could be, it's actually gone together quite well. So I'm quite happy with that. It'll just be a minimal amount of putty work on that seam. Now, when I say minimal, I mean minimal for what could happen when this goes together. If you remember the previous go on the saucer section, um, it was quite a bad seam. This is so much nicer and I really do suggest those micro SMDs for the nav lights. So I've pretty much got the seam all around the saucer section done. There are a couple uh, small areas that I might want to do a bit more touch-up work, but I think the majority of any little tiny things that you might see still will disappear completely when the base coat of paint goes on. So I am pretty much done with the saucer section for the moment. I do want to sand a little bit more of that primer away from the main adhesion point to the secondary hull. I didn't think to... Uh, mask that off when I was doing the painting so I need to just remove that primer so that it adheres better to the secondary hull which I'm just going to swing the camera around here and show you the secondary hull. So this is where we've left it. Warp engines are on. All of the lighting is installed except for two navigation lights which need to go on. Now those two navigation lights, one goes right on the belly here in front of the stand and the other one goes on the end. So I have the tail piece it's the tail cover and I have a small aperture uh, drilled in right at the very tail of the uh, bottom section of the tail of the ship and that is where one of those 0402 SMDs is going to go in for the constant on light and then kind of in that mid belly section will go a flashing uh, 0402 SMD and uh, there's quite a bit of seam work that's going to need to be done on the belly section here. The warp engines are going to need to uh, be puttied in to be molded into the ship. And I've also got the deflector dish which needs to be installed. But I think I'm going to grab a new piece from the other kit because this one, when I was test fitting, um, and just a word, this piece does not fit very well. 
and I'm not sure if you can really see, but right about there, there is a small crack. So I think I'm just going to, I've got the spare part, I might as well just use that so that you can't see uh, that minor defect at all in the finished product. I'll try to see if I can pop the lens for the deflector dish out of that. So, saucer section done for the moment, other than getting that sanding done. Uh, next up is going to be installing the SMDs for the belly flasher and the tail constant light. I'm going to install the LED that will go on the deflector dish, get that installed. Once we're at that point, we're at final assembly stage and then uh, some final putty work and seam work. Then we get on to the beautiful paint stage, which I'm really looking forward to on this particular model. As I've said before, it's going to be a take on what the ship would have looked like in a movie after Nemesis. So that's going to be kind of interesting to see. I've moved on to the deflector dish to do a little bit of work. Now the deflector dish housing along with the captain's yacht has been light blocked on the inside and pre-primed and primed on the outside. The deflector dish has been painted that amber color. Now it's not permanently installed, it's just sat in there. It actually holds in there quite nicely, but yes, it will be permanently affixed in there. I've got the uh, outer ring of the photo etch here, which will sit very nicely just on top of the deflector. Obviously, it'll sit in its proper location there. And then there is a central piece that goes on. I've sanded down the plastic piece so that the photo etch will sit nice and flat on that. Now, I'm going to be running a 5 millimeter LED behind here. And I'll show you what's going on in the back. What I've done is the plastic, the clear plastic piece has been painted the amber on the inside and then I have custom fit a white piece of electrical tape over top and the 5 millimeter LED will sit, will sit in that area so the light will enter that clear plastic piece. The white is used so that it will reflect the light a little bit on the inside and glow the dish, obviously with the majority of the light being in the center. Now this LED will be jacketed like that with some shrink wrap and uh, I've still got to put the resistor on. That will be permanently mounted in that position uh, with epoxy. The back of the LED will be light block with tulip paint and this whole assembly will be connected to the wiring rig. Uh, everything permanently secured down and this piece will get installed into the secondary hull. I will also, before I install this piece, uh, I will cut a mask to go over top of it so that when the, um, when the whole ship is being painted, this will be masked and the photo etch will go on once all of the painting is done. I'll pop up a picture on the screen just for reference from the studio model. The photo etch piece will be painted that uh, kind of dark bronzy color to match what the uh, studio model looks like. Here we are with the sub-assembly of the deflector dish housing complete. As you can see, the light is on. Now there is yellow masking tape on top of the deflector dish to protect it from the uh, model paint scheme. If I turn it around here, you see the back end with the white LED epoxied in. It's uh, been light blocked. I am going to put a piece of, um, this is actually a small piece, I'll be putting a bigger piece of shrink wrap over top just to kind of keep everything contained. But apart from that, this is ready to go and ready to be installed. A little bit more progress to show you right now. We're currently looking at the 
engineering section with the nacelles. Now, they've not been fully secured into the engineering hall here, the pylon, so they're still sitting out. They're just um, inserted in. They will be uh, epoxied in place once we're doing final assembly on everything. I've done some, let me just turn this for you so you can see. I've done some putty work on the underbelly in preparation for installing a flashing LED just right in about there, just ahead of where the stand is going to be, and a little bit of work on the back here. You can also see that I've done initial putty work on the uh, seam of the nacelle, so that's going to be sanded down. We'll see just how well that looks. What I want to draw your attention to, though, is this piece here, which goes into here, and uh, it's oriented the same way. Now, there is a little tiny aperture drilled here, and you can see the wires from the 0402 SMD coming in underneath here. So that has been installed, and when I turn on the power supply, that's a really nice nav light. Now, the one that's going to be back there is going to be on the solid light circuit, so it will not be flashing. And then the one that goes... Uh, just ahead of the stand will be on the flashing circuit. So this one's been fully installed. I'm just going to need to do some sanding along the seam here before I can get that uh, underbelly flasher installed. And then that is the last LED that has to go into this thing. As soon as that is done, we're going to be working on final assembly and all of the seam work that goes along with final assembly. Then... We're into painting, which is going to be a lot of fun on this project. Well, that's going to be all the work for this update. I hope that you've been enjoying it. We are so close to final assembly. Just one LED, just one little teeny tiny SMD left to install. Then it's final assembly where all the various leads are going to be combined, joined together, sent down the post. Everything's going to be installed and uh, the putty work on all of those seams is going to get done. There's going to be some major putty work probably to do on the nacelles where they'll join the hull. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the seam where the saucer joins the secondary hull because there could potentially be planes of separation there. We never saw it and it's never been canon on screen, but all we know, there could be a separation plane there. So I'm not going to worry about where the saucer joins the secondary hull too, too much with the seam. But everything else needs to be taken care of meticulously so that it looks as good as it possibly can. Also, work is starting to go on with the base. And the base has been designed. And drum roll, please. The base is going to be in the shape of the combat for the era of the Enterprise E. Now, if you know the kit, you know that it comes with a plastic base that's designed in the shape of the combat. Well, no, 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 no. No flimsy plastic base here. We want this thing to be solid. So this is going to probably be a rock maple base. And here is the sketched up design and actual size of the base. So this is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So you get an idea of what the size of the base is gonna be. So this is going to be made out of wood with a nice wooden stain as per um, the uh, choice that my client has made. And it's going to have a fairly large internal cavity for all the wiring for the um, control board to go in and for that all to be well looked after, hooked up and everything like that. I just got the power supply and I just got the jacks for that. So I'm gonna have to figure out where the best place for the, for the uh, power supply cable to jack into the base. And uh, it's gonna be pretty cool. Now, this is as close as I could get to the actual com badge proportions. Uh, obviously it's a lot larger than the com badge. You wouldn't wanna be wearing that. But it's, a, to the best of my ability, the best um, proportions, shape, all of that kind of thing. Now, you'll notice that there's these interior lines. Those are actually guides for the cavity that's going to be routed into the center piece where the wiring will go, where the stand base will go into. And actually, you can see that there's a cross section uh, to mark out where the post should be going on this thing. So that's what we're doing as far as a base. So it's, it's, it, the process has started on that because once final assembly is done, we're going to need to be able to put this somewhere. It'll probably go on my 
table vice most of the time, but it'll be nice to actually see it on the base and make sure it's all uh, working well. And when we do the final hookup to the board and all of that testing, it will be attached to the base. So looking forward to getting that done. So next video, hopefully that's going to be assembly video all assembled by the end of next video. That is my goal. I'm not going to say it's my promise, but that is my goal because I want uh, a month and a half to be able to paint this thing. So I want this assembled in the next week, week and a half, give or take. We'll see how that goes because uh, it's going to be quite a quite the paint job on this thing and I'm really looking forward to it. So if you've really enjoyed this update, please, please, please make sure that you hit the like button and that you are subscribed. If you're not subscribed yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy for you if you do. We're at 260 subscribers, which is amazing. Thank you so much. But my, I'm, this is Andrew. Uh, I'm with Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.